welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about, well, I've been getting a lot of questions about knots, right? So what type of knots do I use for what type of situation? Uh, so I wanted to cover that, show you how I tie them. Uh, but I also wanted to talk about a company that I've partnered with, uh, I think maybe midway through last year, uh, called Lurlock. Uh, if you're familiar with their boxes, they've got that uh, sticky substance at the bottom of the boxes to keep your stuff from rattling around. Uh, I want to talk to you about an experience I had with them. Um, over this past week and uh, and show you something. So uh, we'll do that here at the end. Uh, but until then, let's tie some knots. So this first knot we're gonna show you is the uh, Palomar knot. So probably one of the more popular knots that, uh, um, that are out there. Uh, I think it's probably used by uh, more people than it isn't anymore. Um, not my favorite knot, I'm gonna preface it with that, but uh, still a good knot, right? So. Uh, pick some yellow lines, so hopefully the camera picks this up okay. So basically with a Palomar knot, you'll feed it through the eye and then back through again. This jig, by the way, is uh, the Doc Rock from Jack Bates. Uh, and if you guys uh, want to go check them out, just go to jackshop.com uh, and put in the code BOREM1 at uh, checkout and you'll get uh, a little bit of love, 10% off. So you'll end up with that. So you've got a loop on one end and then your two tags on the other. So the knot's pretty simple to tie. Uh, make sure you give yourself uh, enough slack. And basically what you'll do is you'll take your loop and basically just tie a regular overhand knot. So it'll look like that, okay? You'll take the tag end of the knot, so or the uh, loop end of the knot, and put it around whatever lure you're tying on. So now you've got that, and then wet the line. That's probably the most important thing. Just wet that and cinch it down. So now basically what happens is everywhere the line touches the lure, it touches it at two points, right, uh, because of the loop. Um, you don't need to go cranking this knot down because you're just going to weaken it. Um, just cinch it down and then snip your tag off. Uh, this is the other part that really annoys me when it comes to people uh, snipping off the tag ends of their line. They'll get right down there to the little micro millimeter of, uh, of the tag. Um, I snip it off with about a quarter of an inch. That gives you a little bit of room for it to slip if it does by chance slip. Uh, but I think Gerald Swindle probably said it the best that the fish didn't see this first 80 yards of line. They're not going to balk at a quarter of an inch. So don't snip it down to the very end, okay? But there is your Palomar knot. Pretty simple. So the next knot we're going to cover is the what I call the improved fisherman's knot or modified fisherman's knot. Um, this one's you know pretty common since I think we all started fishing. Just loop the uh, line straight through the eye. I put my thumb right there. Twist it around the line, you know, six, eight, ten times, however many you want. I usually do about eight. Back through the bottom loop. And then back through the other loop. So that's what you're left with. That weird looking thing. Again, I always wet the line down just because I don't want it to burn. Pull it tight, we'll slide right down, and there you've got your improved fisherman's knot, modified fisherman's knot, whatever you want to call it. Uh, again, I just clip it down, leave myself a quarter of an inch just in case, um, but there, another really simple knot. So this next knot I use on things like uh, any really any top water that you're trying to really walk the dog with um, it's just a non-slip loop knot um, and it gives you a little bit more room uh, a little bit more action to what you're tying so basically what I do first is I tie just a basic overhand knot in the line itself so you've got just this little overhand knot got your tag end here what I do is I feed the tag end through the uh, through the eye. So you've got your overhand knot right behind it. 
and I'll take the tag end of the line and I'll twist it four or five times um, around the knot itself or around the main line itself and then back through the overhand knot. So if you can kind of, whoops, let me pull it back up so you can kind of see it. So after you twist it back through that uh, overhand knot, so what you're left with is something that looks kind of like if it stopped falling out of my hand. Uh, so back through that overhand knot and then cinch it down. And now you've got that overhand or that uh, loop knot doesn't slip down and it gives plenty of room for your, you know, mostly for, for things like uh, pencil baits, stuff like that. Um, it really does a nice job of allowing it to give it a little bit more freer motion. Uh, that's it. Again, tag end. Don't worry about snipping it down. Leave yourself a quarter of an inch in case something does slip, but that won't slip down the line. So that'll stay perfectly just like that. Doesn't slip down no matter what you do. Another really, really good uh, quick knot to tie. Um, and then depending on where you put that loop is going to depend on how big this loop ends up. So when you tie that overhand knot, the closer you tie it, the smaller the loop will be. But another pretty simple, straightforward knot. So this last knot I'm going to show you is my all-time favorite knot. So I don't know what the name of this particular knot is. Um, I just call it the triple tag knot. Uh, Gerald Swindle uh, is actually the one that uh, um, I found this knot through. Uh, and it is uh, arguably, and people can argue, uh, one of the best uh, knots, period. Uh, as far as breaking strength, uh, it was put up against a Palomar knot and beat it. So um, I have never had this knot break on me yet. Uh, knock on wood. Um, so I am, uh, I, I swear by this knot pretty much uh, um, completely. So you start it off the same way as you do uh, the standard Palomar knot, right? So you've got your, your two tag ends, uh, your main line, your tag end, and then the loop. So what you do from there is you take that loop, let's get it off of the jig body here so I can actually tie the knot. So you take that loop, hold the tag end and your main line together, take that loop and wrap it around both of them. Uh, I do, uh, depending on the uh, size of line I use, I generally do four. That gives you eight twists in the line. Bring that back through the loop you create at the bottom by the eye of the hook. So now it's gonna look like that. Wet it down. Slide it in. Again, there is no need to crank on this knot. You know, you don't need to yank on it. Uh, there's no purpose in it. Uh, all you're gonna do is weaken the line. So now you've got a loop end, your tag, your main line. So you just take your, your uh, loop end, Cut it off again, leave about a quarter of an inch. It'll help uh, help in case anything does slip. And what you're left with is a knot that basically has three tags. By far the strongest knot uh, I have ever used. Um, and I use it literally on everything uh, from fluorocarbon, mono, uh, to all the way to uh, um, uh, braid. It's a, it really is a fantastic knot. But I just call it the triple tag. I don't really know what it's called, but uh, by far the best knot I've, uh, I've used thus far. So the last knot I'm going to do, I wasn't going to do this one, but I get asked this enough, so I might as well, uh, is what do I do when I'm tying uh, my braid uh, to a floral leader? Um, so I use, I think it's a, a uni to uni knot, whatever it's called. Uh, I'll just show you what I do. So I've got two different colored lines here. We'll just pretend that this is my leader. This is my braid. Okay, so you basically lay them over the top of each other. Um, I usually give myself six, seven inches of line. Okay, so basically what you do is I pinch them both together right there, uh, somewhere about the middle, and you take your braid and make a loop and hold that loop in your finger. So now you've got that loop there. Now you take your tag end and bring it through that loop. Uh, with the braid, I usually do four to five times and about the same with the floral leader, um, just to make sure that the knot isn't too big. So then after you make your loops, 
just cinch that down just a little bit. Don't tighten it, just cinch it down. So you've got that there. And then the same thing with the other side, only reverse. So now I take and make a loop with my fluorocarbon leader. Okay, so you got your loop. And then you take the the tag end of that loop or the, of the fluorocarbon leader and feed it through the uh, um, through the loop there. And again, four or five times is plenty good. That leaves you with, you know, about eight twists in the line. And then cinch that down. So now you have got you're not there and you're not there. So I just wet the line down, let go of your tag ends, and just slide those knots together. Get them good and snug. And then I just look it over just to make sure it is how I want it to be. Looks good. This one I do clip right down. I have not had a problem with one of these slipping yet uh, or breaking. Um, so I am confident in uh, letting it go right down to the wire. And that is, hopefully it focuses on that, the knot I use to go braid to floral. So I hope that helps uh, give you some idea of uh, at least how to tie some, some really good knots, uh, give you some variation in what you can do. and. Um, and uh, under dif different circumstances, you can tie a few different knots. Uh, they're all pretty quick. Um, I think I tied all four of those knots showing you in like a, a minute or a total of four minutes. So they're not tough knots to tie. Uh, you can do it really, really quick when you're out on the water. Um, so again, I hope that helps uh, and answers some of the questions that I've been getting lately. So uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was lure lock. So uh, if you guys are not familiar with lure lock, uh, they make tackle boxes with this stuff called Tack Logic. So it's a really tacky uh, substance at the bottom of their boxes that keeps all your lures in place and keeps them from rattling around, right? Uh, that's important for a couple of reasons. You're not dinging up and chipping up all of your tackle. Um, you know, they're, they're, they, uh, they seal really nice, so you're not gonna get all the rust and stuff. Your hooks aren't gonna get dull from smacking around on each other. Um, well, I had a problem uh, with some boxes that I ordered about, uh, I guess it was about a year ago. They started uh, warping a little bit. Uh, either the box or the lid, it was really hard to tell which one was warping. Um, the, the edges were lifting up a little bit, uh, and then the centers were, were separating. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. The center right here started separating, so there's a big gap there. Uh, yep, and then these edges were warping up a little bit. So I wasn't sure if that was normal, um, because it has been kind of hot here, but uh, I called Lurlock and... Uh, or got a hold of uh, got a hold of them and uh, kind of explained them my situation and so they uh, asked me to take a few pictures and I sent it to them and and uh, both the guys that I talked to Phil and uh, man I'm sorry I can't remember the other guy's name um, uh, talked to those guys and uh, they right away said you know what no that doesn't look normal um, give me your address I'll get you some some new boxes uh, guys. They shipped the boxes out the same day that I emailed them. Uh, I got them like four days later. Uh, if that is not customer service, uh, I don't know what is. They told me to keep the, the old boxes uh, and sent me five new lure lock of the large Plano boxes. Um, that tack logic stuff that I was telling you about. <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, they put a sticker in each one too, so that's pretty dang cool. Um, but this tack logic stuff, it's. Uh, Elastec, Elastec technology is what they call it. So the bottom of this box is this elastic, sticky substance. So if you're not familiar with what it does, I will show you. Let me find, I'm sure I have a piece of tackle up here somewhere. I do. I've got a jitterbug. So, uh, old school jitterbug. How do you like that? So, Basically what you do is you put the piece of tackle, whatever you're putting in there. Um, so you can see it's in there like that. Uh, it sits on that little Elastec uh, um, 
uh, bottom. They don't come out. Um, ridiculous. Uh, I love them. Absolutely, uh, thus far, my favorite tackle boxes uh, of all. Um, I've got several different kinds. You know, I've got some stuff from Bass Mafia. I've got uh, the Terminal Tackle Box uh, from Calcos Fishing. Um, I've got a lot of different stuff uh, that I've had uh, over the years. And this is by far um, my favorite of anything that I've purchased so far. Um, I think the boxes I got were, it was probably just a fluke um, that, uh, that they happen to warp a little bit. Um, you know, it has been hot here. Uh, I'm talking like 105, 106, 107. Uh, and I don't always get to take my tackle out of the boat. But to have a company like that take care of uh, a customer with basically no questions, right? They just wanted to know what happened and, and uh, were more concerned on getting the problem resolved uh, than the cost of the boxes. Because the boxes aren't cheap, guys. Uh, five of these boxes, uh, I think, cost... I think it was 110, 112 bucks. Uh, came with a little uh, uh, case that you can mount right on the wall for storage in the wintertime. Or if you're taking stuff out of the boat and just storing it. Um, so they're not cheap. Uh, but like I said, to have them basically no questions asked, just take care of me. Uh, that's one of the reasons I chose to partner with those guys uh, um, last year. Because everything that I heard about them, uh, all the reviews I read, uh, told me that this is a company that I, I want to associate my name with and uh, I am very very thankful for those guys so to all you guys at Lure Lock um, everybody that makes that stuff happen uh, thank you so very much uh, you have a loyal I promise customer for life um, and if there's anything I, I can do for you guys uh, above and beyond promoting you let me know and I'll make sure I get you, ta you taken care of so uh, from the Nine Toes Fishing family to uh, you guys uh, thank you so much so anyways, guys, uh, and they did send me five boxes. Here's all five of them, just so you can see. All five of them have brand new stickers in them so I could plaster them all over the place. Um, just very excited uh, and very thankful um, to have partners like that. Um, so, yep, it's awesome. Go check them out if you get a chance. Uh, I promise you, uh, you will not regret um, you won't regret it. One of the coolest tackle boxes uh, I think on the market. So now I have a boatload of them. I love it. Uh, oh, another cool thing about these. So uh, when you uh, normally go to put those inserts in, it can be a pain in the butt trying to separate them, cutting the little tabs off and all of that stuff uh, as easy uh, as they could possibly make it. Give it a twist. That's it. Oh, but that little piece is sometimes hard to get off. I know. It's not. Give it a twist. It's gone. There you go. Doesn't matter. Give it a twist. Gone. Give the little one a twist. Gone. Uh, so they make it super simple to, to get uh, these separators uh, divided up. Um, they thought of everything literally when they built this box. So, uh, again, uh, I am thankful. And you really need to go check them out. So, that is it, guys. Um... That's what today's video is going to encompass, knots and lure lock. Uh, again, don't forget to check out my boys over at Jack Bates. Uh, we make you know all kinds of stuff from flipping jigs, uh, structure jigs, crappie jigs, uh, swim bait heads, um, A-rig heads, just a ton of really, really cool stuff uh, and a lot of stuff coming out on the horizon. Uh, probably one of the best jigs, period. Not just saying it because they're my partner. Uh, one of the best jigs, period, ever. Um, I love this dock rock. It makes it really easy for skipping, stuff like that. Their structure jigs are awesome. Um, their skirts all, and their, and their, uh, um, the O-rings that they attach the skirts with are all not uh, no rot. Um, really high quality, premium skirting material. Um, they've got these little deals back here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Uh, I can insert rattles if I want to. Um, they're pretty fantastic, but if you use the code BOREM1 at uh, jackbaits.com, or jackedshop.com, sorry, um, save 10%, so go check them out. Um, other than that, I don't think I got anything else. 
No, I don't, I don't think I do. Oh, I got something in the mail today. I can show you. So my other big thing is I'm a huge Vikings fan, right? Uh, and I've recently gotten into a little bit of card collecting and uh, buying and selling and just, just some fun stuff. But uh, uh, today I got an autograph card in the mail uh, that I purchased uh, about a week ago. Um, yeah, a little Irv Smith Jr. action. This is the bronze, I think, or no, this is a silver uh, refractor, Irv Smith Jr. out of uh, Legacy Football, so uh, I love it. Kid's gonna be good, gonna be really good. Let's just lift you up here, I'll take you on a little tour. So over here we've got a little Fran Tarkenton. Um, this one is not an autograph card, uh, just a numbered card. And that one is to uh, 999, uh, but still pretty cool. Uh, I've got a Dalvin Cook numbered card, Robert Smith, uh, Anthony Barr's uh, rookie autograph, uh, a couple of Irv Smith, Ryan Connolly from the Badgers, uh, TJ Edwards from the Badgers. Uh, those I just got because they were in a pack of cards I got. Uh, and I hate the Packers, but whatever. Uh, I got a Steph Diggs uh, numbered card. Uh, that one's uh, numbered to 99. A little Adrian Peterson uh, uh, coin. Another Diggs card just to match the other one. Uh, got a Ron Yeri autographed Hall of Fame jersey. We got some Vikings gloves, a Vikings fidget spinner. Uh, those are my babies. Uh, but yeah, um, I collect some Viking stuff too. Over here, what do you think of that? A little third place trophy from. Uh, one of the tournaments this year. Let me give you an up close and personal look at the Eastern Washington Bass third place. Uh, so got to hang a little hardware this year too. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it guys. So again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to uh, comment, hit the like button. Uh, we need a big push to get to 500 subs. We're not very far away. I can't do it without you guys. Uh, so once again, thanks for all your support. We'll talk to you later, tight lines.